Hello! I am coming at you about a week later than my scheduled time due to some technical difficulties. Um, but I decided I would come at you with a different style video than my usual. My two video streak usual. Um, I am here today in front of my, um, my yarn stash. Um, I'm actually currently trying to alter my relationship with my stash to a pl pretty large degree. Um, as it stands now, most of my stash is, um, is commercial. I think I've got one hand-spun skein in my stash right now, and, um, even this was commercially dyed. Um, I don't want, necessarily want to eliminate my my relationship with commercially dyed yarns or commercial commercially produced processed yarns but i um i would like to become a lot more local in my sourcing of yarn and considering um the fact that i have a friend who raises alpacas and um and just other possibilities um you know i live in the midwest where there are quite a bit of sheep um, sheep is very, like, fleece is available for those that look. I think this is a very possible goal of mine. And so I want to, um, I want to work on eliminating or limiting, greatly limiting my stash. Um, right now my stash is organized according to color, very, very loosely organized. I've got reds up here oranges, yellowishes, greens, blues, purples, and then over here I have neutrals going from like black to white. Um, kind of hard to see the whole shot, but you get the general picture. Um, I'm wanting to alter it so that my yarn is organized as according to function rather than, um, rather than color, so that it's more So that it's easier to to pull things out and to um, to incorporate them into various projects, more inspiring too, I think. So right now I have a bunch of yarn up here. You probably can't you can't really see that. All of this is either um, like in the case of these Noro Ito bowls, they would take up pretty much a whole cubby. So I just stashed them up there, and then I have a bunch of other yarn that is currently slotted for other projects. So I'm not I'm not incorporating any of those. I'm just gonna focus on what is right here in these in these cubbies. So um, I I don't have a very specific plan with this either. I'm just gonna kind of play with it, and I'll get back to you when I reach the other side. Like the Let the, let the rhythm just Let the rhythm The rhythm Let the rhythm just Let the rhythm Let the, let the rhythm just Yeah, yeah Let the Polish ambassador miss the lift Ride with us on this journey real swift are you ready? Alright, here I am on the other side. Um, and I will explain the method to my madness here. Um, so I, uh, the basic, the basic formulation, um, is, or the, like, the basic categories going here is by weight, which, um, I feel like is a pretty common way of organizing your yarns, but um, I went even further from there, so I'll just start from the lightest weights down to the bottom, the bulkiest. So obviously I started with lace weight up here. I have um, some other lace weight yarns incoming at the moment, so I saved some slots up here, but um, basically I got like this really soft, luxurious lace weight yarn here. And then, um, and then I put my more coarse yarns here, 
in a separate cubby. And then, um, and then over here I have like crochet thread, basically in various colors. Um, some cotton, some linen, but they're very similar as far as, um, as far as fabrics go and like roughly interchangeable, I think. So from there I went into sock yarns. Um, sock yarns are these cubbies here. Um, so I have, this is all the same colorway. This is the same kind of yarn. This has a similar feel to the sock yarn. Um, this is like very smooth worsted weight yarn. Or not worsted, worsted spun yarn. This is more like wool and spun. It's not quite a wool and spun, like it would still be comfortable on the on the feet, but it's a bit fuzzier. And then this one, I mean, it's kind of an oddball in this little cubby here, because um, it's cotton-based, a cotton-based sock yarn. I think it's Schockenmeyer. Um, anyways, it's, uh, I don't know, like I just, I categorize it differently. It's got, maybe it's here because um, it's got similar, like, uh, striping. It's kind of like a, a, a self-striping yarn or a marling, whereas these are more like, this is a striping too, but I don't know. Not everything is thought up. It still feels at home here. And then, um, yeah, more sock yarns, highly saturated colors, so it feels right that they're here. And then from there I went into, I've got fingering weight up and up through these cubbies here. So um, I, I paired these three together because I have a pattern in mind that I'd like to use with them. Um, I'm not setting them aside because I don't feel anywhere near to starting that project. Uh, but I've just got them grouped for now because that's kind of where my head's at right now. And then these are um, some like worsted spun non-sock yarns. I classified them as non-sock fingering yarns because they don't have their, I think, well this, these are both merino and this one is a, this is a viscose and alpaca blend, which maybe this would be a good sock yarn now that I think about it. Because that viscose content would probably make it strong enough. So maybe I'll just, I'll put that in here. And then these are wool and spun fingering weight yarns. Um, a couple years ago I had bought, I wanted a large quantity of yarn because my stash was very slim. Um, and I didn't want to do a bunch of different shipping things because I was living on the island of Hawaii and it's very expensive to get things shipped out there. Um, so I just went with a value pack from Palette. It was like $50 for 25 little balls of yarn. So I have, and, and the palette was like, uh, like candy themed. So a lot of like really bright colors. Um, these are colors that I've, I've kind of struggled using them because uh, personally I lean more towards earthy tones. I like bright colors paired with earthy tones, but like when I just um, really, I just need yarns that will pair nicely with this kind of yarn. More neutrals. I, and I was, you know, thinking about, um, this yarn here is also a wool and spun yarn. Um, technically a DK weight, but if you look at the yarn close up, they look, yeah, let's, let's see what I'm, what am I doing here? This feels so awkward. one strand now. They look very comparable. And like this one might even be a little thicker. Um, it's spun a bit more loosely than this one is. It's got a, this one is, uh, has more twist. 
but I think they would pair quite nicely. Anyways, all of those palette yarns I have here. And then here, this is kind of like a more into a sport weight yarn. I have um, cotton, some silks, and then a silk rayon. These feel like they're, they're fabrics that will have, aside from the cotton, they'll have very similar drape. Um, the cotton will have sim like more similar to silk than wool, which is why it's there. Um, and I'll remember that that's cotton easily enough. That's not a problem. Here, um, I just kind of lumped all of the... Actually, this one should go in here. This is a silk yarn. This is a recycled silk yarn from Darn Good Yarns. So I'll put that in here. And then here's some um, sport weight wool and spun yarns. So those are there. And then I have all of my DK, DK weight wool and spun yarns here. And honestly, the only DK weight yarn I have is wool and spun, which is interesting. I didn't know that. Most of it is actually from Patagonia yarns. Um, this past winter, my local yarn store was closing for business. Uh, the owners were retiring and um, no one in the family wanted to take over the business and no one bought it in like the time frame that they had announced their closing so um, they had huge sales on all of their yarn and if you don't know this this is a very affordable like just a godsend for those that are interested in um, more ethically processed wool or you know like uh, not acrylic non-acrylic yarns it's also organic so if you don't know organic doesn't necessarily mean that the yarn is totally organically produced but it does mean that the animals are fed organic food so that's you know you have uh there's a general idea that the animals were treated quite nicely and um i'm certainly fond of that and it's always hard to tell when it's like you don't personally know but as far as like commercially bought yarns go, this is a really nice one. And um, it's it's $15, or at least it was um, not on sale uh, at full retail price. It was $15 per skein. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the yardage real quick, just so you get the full idea. It's a Juniper Moon Farm yarn. Patagonia is the name of the yarn, and there's about 382 yards, or 350 meters in that yarn, so that's, for $15, that's a pretty good deal for, you know, a high quality, quality yarn. So after that, I moved into, um, general worsted weight yarn. Worsted weight yarn goes all the way down here, because it's thick, um, I have a good deal of worsted weight cotton yarns. Most of my cotton yarn is worsted weight because, you know, most of my cotton yarn is Lily's sugar and cream. So I just kind of, um, I, I kind of lump them by colors. I put like the more neutrally, like the light neutrally tones over here, the darker neutral, neutral like tones, muted tones maybe is a better classification for what's going on here. And then the more, um, colorful stuff I put in this. I just kind of jammed them in here. My my general idea is like, you know, I'm looking for a project or I just want to explore yarn. I'll like seek out a category and just pull it all out and, and dig through and play with colors from there. Um, so I'm not too concerned about packing things in. I like the look of having like, you know, you can kind of all the pops of color I enjoy that. It's just like soul food to see. But um anyways, I digress. Here I have um single ply worsted weight ish yarn. Um just generally piled in here. Here I have my worsted ish weight hand spun yarn. I put that in a category of its own um, because 
It's hand spun, it's special. And then my one big old skein of fisherman's wool. My partner saw this at Joanne one time when he was like, nah. he was just like really stoked to find 100% wool in a big box store and like this much of it. I think that's mostly what was going on here. Um, this, so over here is like, eh, it's not quite worn spun. It's not quite worsted spun. Is, can, is there like an in-between? Maybe I just don't know enough about spinning and I'm just like, you know, making stuff up at this point. But what I mean by that is this is, um, it's not totally smooth. Maybe, maybe it's wool and spun, but with more plies than what I think of in being wool and spun. So that's these here. This is, um, now I'm really questioning it. Is this worsted or wool and spun? I need to learn more. I had assumed this was worsted or wor sorry, worsted spun wool. Um, kind of like mild color. I had that in the category of its own. Um, and these are two almost definitely <laughs> worsted spun yarns in worsted weight. Um, I think those would pair nicely together, or, you know, something else entirely, we'll see what happens. And then, all of the bulky yarn that I have, I'm not, I'm not huge on the bulky yarns. I think they're so luscious, but I don't particularly enjoy knitting with them, so I don't have a lot. But, um, I paired all of these into one cubby. I really, this is yarn that my sister brought back from Nepal for me. It's a, it's a yak wool. This stuff is definitely more sentimental. Anyways, that's, that's what's going on here. I have, um, the lace weight yarns coming in here is, uh, more of that alpaca cloud yarn from Knit Fix. I had mentioned that in a previous episode. Um, I really like holding it with other yarns and with the garter squish blanking blanket that I'm making right now. Um, I'm almost entirely out of um, lace weight that would work for that project. These are too coarse, I feel. This one um, is too precious. <laughs> Uh, I have other ideas in mind for that one. And the alpaca cloud yarn, as I had mentioned, is, um, it's quite affordable. So I thought we could, you know, drop 16 bucks on a couple of skeins of that. And, um, yeah, that's what I've got planned for the future of these empty cubbies. And other than that, that's about it. Um, thank you for joining me. Um, if you have a particular way that you like to organize your stash, if you organize your stash, I would love to hear more about it. Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider watching some of my other content, liking, subscribing, supporting me on Ko-fi. Um, very open to any of those possibilities. So, thank you for watching.